What's up Street Talks, it's Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about letting your photos marinate. Uh, one of the analogies I always use when it comes to you know editing your shots and figuring out which of your shots are the best is the idea of marinating. So pretty much, let's say you're trying to make a nice steak. What are you going to do? Are you going to take the steak out of the, the freezer and just you know plop it onto your plate and just grill it when it's frozen? Probably not because, you know, how's the steak going to taste? I mean, you're going to cut into it. I mean, it's just a piece of ice and you try to eat it. And I mean, it's horrible. I mean, my first year in college, it was the worst experience. I tried to make a steak like that and my roommate Kevin looked like I was crazy. And of course, over time, I learned what's the best way to marinate a steak. Well, you know, you take the steak out of the freezer. You let it marinate um, in the, the juices or something. Oh, no, no, before that, you have to let it defrost. You have to put in the water. Then once done defrosting, you put in the juices. You know, generally with uh, marinade, you let it sit. You know, generally the longer the better, not too long, of course. And once you finally cook it, then the, the meat has gained all the juices and all of the, the nice flavors and whatnot. I think we could use the same analogy when it comes to letting our photos marinate because oftentimes, you know, we take the photos and we look at our LCD screens or we rush home on Lightroom. We look at our photos and we're so excited about our shots. We just want to share our babies with the world. But at the same time, there's a, a saying that Gary Winogrand once said is, um, oftentimes photographers mistake the emotion when you take a photo, whether if a photo is good or not. So pretty much to rephrase, sometimes when we're taking the photos, the memory of taking the photo is so strong and so vivid that we think it's an amazing shot, but in reality, the shot actually might not be so good. So for example, I'll tell a story. Um, you know, I remember one day in downtown LA, it's raining and you know, it's super cold and I'm wearing my cam, I'm holding my camera, I'm like, man, why am I doing this kind of thing? And suddenly I see a little girl with a red umbrella jump over a puddle, kind of like Cardi Brisson style. I'm like, oh my God, click, 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 click. And you know, I look at my LCD screen, and this is when I was shooting my Canon 5D, I believe. And, you know, the memory of the photo and the, all the, the descriptive elements, you know, the, the rain, the coldness, the little girl in the red jumping over the puddle, and all these emotions kind of coalesced inside me. And so I thought that it was really a strong image. And so, you know, I, of course, I rush home, you know, post process in Lightroom and upload to Facebook and Flickr, and I'm like, all right. Time for me to get my hundred or so likes and faves. And you know, I get like five. And I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like, I thought this was like the greatest piece of work that I ever created. But what I realized is that uh, maybe two or three weeks later, I look at the photo again and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, this photo wasn't quite as good as I remembered it. Um, and so, you know, it was a huge uh, lesson for me in the sense that sometimes letting your photos sit for a long time before looking at them and judging them um, during the editing phase of choosing your best images is really crucial. Nowadays, one of the great things that I shoot film is that after I take a photo, I mean, I can't chimp and look at the back of my LCD screen because it's just physically not possible. And so generally after taking my photos, I wait about a month at least. Generally nowadays, like it's almost like two or three months because I'm pretty busy before I even look at my photos. And the great thing about that is when I finally look at my photos, it's like, I'm looking at a stranger's photos, and everyone knows it's easy to uh, critique a stranger's photos, so it's really easy in those terms. So some specific guidelines I could give, um, first of all, if you're shooting digital. I think one of the hardest things is when you're shooting on the streets to not look at the LCD screen, which they call chimping. If you guys ever wonder why it's called chimping, it's like, you know, you show someone your LCD screen and you're like, oh, look what I got. Ooh, 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 ah, and then you still all turn to monkeys. But, you know, it's, it's really difficult. I mean, um, nowadays I've been, uh, I, you know, Rico sent me a little GRD machine with that. And I've, you know, I've been chipping like crazy too. It's like looking at the LCD screen all the time. And one of the easiest ways to kind of stop it is just turn off the auto preview and just tell yourself, okay, just don't worry. You, it could wait. It's like, it's almost like texting and driving is that, you know, looking at text while you're driving doesn't really make a difference at all. I mean, you could just wait till you get home. So when it comes to, you know, chimping, I mean, either wait till you're in a cafe because the problem about chimping is when you're taking photos, you look at the photo too, too quickly and it kind of uh, screws up your judgment if the photo is good or not. And also part of it is, you know, you miss other photo opportunities. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is 
Uh, generally, after you put your you download your photos into Lightroom or whatever software you use, just let it sit for a while, um, and don't don't be so rushed on the first day you look through all your photos. Uh, there are several good things about this. Uh, the first thing is, it's very rare you make a good tree photograph, so most chances being is that you might be shooting an entire day, you're probably not gonna get any interesting photos. I I know personally I don't. I mean, for me, I get like one interesting photo a month, maybe one good one a year, and so. You know, just after downloading your photos to your computer, just let them sit. I mean, honestly, the longer you let them sit, the better. I would say at least a week or two. That's just my personal thoughts. And, you know, once you let your photos sit for a while, then go back to your computer, then start looking through them. And this doesn't mean that you can't, that you just stop shooting. Is that, you know, you still try to shoot as much as you can, preferably every day. And then when you go back to your Lightroom, uh, then you start looking through them. And, you know, be absolutely brutal when it comes to editing. Uh, because oftentimes I think the less photos you share you share is better as a photographer because you only show your strong work and there's the saying that you know there's the the weakest link is the one that makes the ball chain drop so if you think about your photos you have one strong photo after another and you have the really weak uh, the really weak photo the whole you know chain breaks and you know it's not really good and um, and even before you upload a photo to the internet, I mean, I'm a little bit more critical with myself is I generally try to wait, um, rule of thumb, at least for my film shots, at least a year, uh, when I'm working on my projects, because I have to get a lot of feedback and a lot of thoughts about whether, pe what people think about my photos. Um, and the, the benefit of this is once again, you could get a lot of different feedback from people, whether it be on the internet or in person. And I think every time you release a photo, you know, it should kind of be like a work of art, you know, something that you're very proud of and something you're thinking of is very strong. The, ne the problem nowadays is us as photographers, of course, we want to share all our work, but we just end up sharing too much. And with digital, it's a click, click, click. It's just, it's just really easy. Um, if you also want to spend more time to let your shots really marinate, I mean, just try out using film because after taking photos, I mean, most street photographers I know who shoot film are kind of lazy, so they just don't get their film processed for like a few weeks or a few months. Um, and even after getting processed, I mean, they might not want to even scan it for a while. So generally, before they even really have it on their computers, it's about like, you know, three to six months. So the benefit of this, once again, when you're shooting, you're not chimping. And it forces you to let your photos marinate. So once again, think about the mentality, less is more. Of course, we love our photos. Try to start sharing less. And, you know, let sit on your photos longer. Let them just kind of absorb all the juices and sometimes it is time is the ultimate test and whether something's good or not. All right, so thanks for watching guys. Um, I'll be trying to upload some more tips along the way. All right, take care guys. Peace.